All right, so we know we love to uh, really dig into the stuff you send us. And yeah. I, I think this one is really, really cool. Absolutely. So um, I'm excited. We've got this blog post that uh, comes from Cheap ABA. Mm -hmm. And it's talking about some really practical and low risk ways for people with autism to connect with others. Yeah. And you know what's what I think is so great about this post is that it's really focused on like improving emotional well being. Yeah. Independence and like overall quality of life for individuals on the spectrum, you know? And it's so important, I think, to remember that social connection is key for everyone. Absolutely. But, you know, for individuals with autism, it can be really, really challenging sometimes. Yeah. So this whole concept of low risk interactions, mm -hmm. it really piqued my interest. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, essentially what those are are like brief, predictable mm -hmm. yeah. and casual encounters that really just help to minimize the pressure. Yeah. For someone, it's all about like creating a sense of control and comfort, which can be so empowering. Okay. So let's actually dive into some of the examples that the blog post gives. Yes. Because there were a few that like really stood out to me. Okay. One was reading at a coffee shop. Uh -huh. I do that all the time. Yeah. And I never thought of it as a social interaction. Right. That's a perfect example though. Oh, it is. I mean, like, I think it provides that like gentle buzz of being around people. Yeah. But you're engrossed in a book. Yeah. So it's a really great way to kind of experience connection without direct interaction. Right. And on your own terms, you know, you're choosing your level of engagement. And it just got me thinking about all these other everyday activities that we do. Yeah. That could be like these low risk social interactions. Totally. And they also mentioned in the post observing nature. Yeah. And what's fascinating about that is the calming effect of nature. Yeah. It can be a shared experience even without direct communication. Yeah. And it can be a gateway to like even connecting with others who share that interest. Like imagine going on a bird washing walk with someone. You're yeah. connecting through the shared passion. That's such a good point. Yeah. Um, and then they had an example of playing with a pet. Oh, yeah. Which I thought. I love that one. I know. It really resonated with me, too. Yeah. The bond with animals can be incredibly powerful and therapeutic. Yeah. That unconditional love and companionship can be a fantastic starting point right. for some individuals to then build comfort with human interaction. So right. Like a stepping stone. So we've got these things that seem very simple, yeah. like reading in a coffee shop, enjoying nature, or spending time with a pet. Right. But the Post is saying they're actually really powerful tools. Absolutely. For building social comfort. These low risk interactions, they're not trivial. Yeah. They're like building blocks for developing social skills and confidence. Right. Think of it this way like any muscle social skills can be strengthened with practice. Yeah. And these low pressure activities provide a safe and comfortable space to practice. That makes so much sense. So it's not about staying in this low risk zone forever. Right. But using these experiences as a foundation to kind of gradually yeah. step out of your comfort zone. You got, yeah, it's about progressing at a pace that feels comfortable and manageable for each individual. Right. The blog post really emphasizes the importance of like gradually increasing okay. the duration, the frequency, yeah. and even the complexity of interactions as confidence grows. This is all starting to feel really practical and applicable. Yeah. I'm already thinking about how I can incorporate some of this stuff yeah. into my own life and maybe even help other people. I know me too. And you know what's great is that they offer even more guidance in the post. Okay. They recommend checking out resources like Autism Speaks and the Autism Society. Mm -hmm. These organizations offer a wealth of information support groups and even social skills training programs. That's a fantastic starting point. Yeah. Now I'm wondering what else is in this blog post because I'm already <laughs> getting so much out of it. Me too. One of the things that I thought was really insightful was like the emphasis on autonomy and control yeah. in these low risk interactions. Yeah, that really stood out to me, too. It's about creating opportunities for individuals with autism to engage mm -hmm. on their own terms and at their own pace. Right. Because sensory overload and social anxiety are such common experiences you know, right. for individuals on the spectrum. So having that sense of agency yeah. over their interactions can be so empowering. So it's not about like pushing someone into a situation that feels overwhelming. Right. But more about providing that safe and comfortable environment where they can gradually 
yeah build their social confidence exactly and it's important to remember that everyone's comfort level is different yeah what might feel low risk for one person could be quite challenging for another right it's all about finding that sweet spot where connection feels both safe and enjoyable so how might this approach impact someone's life beyond just like feeling more comfortable in social situations i'm curious about the broader implications that's a great question I think these small steps towards social comfort can create like a ripple effect mm -hmm. on various aspects of an individual's life. Mm -hmm. Increased confidence in social settings can lead to greater independence, improved communication skills, and even open doors to new opportunities, mm -hmm. whether it's an education, employment, or personal relationships. It's like a chain reaction of positive outcomes. Precisely. And let's not forget the potential impact on mental health. Oh, yeah. Reducing social anxiety and fostering a sense of belonging can significantly improve someone's emotional well-being and overall quality of life. You know, it also really struck me that the blog post specifically mentioned resources like Autism Speaks and the Autism Society. Yeah. It seems like they're really advocating for seeking out support and guidance. Absolutely. Navigating the world with autism can have its challenges. Yeah. And there's no shame in reaching out for help. You know, those organizations can provide valuable information connect individuals with support groups, and offer resources for developing social skills. It's a reminder that no one has to go through this alone. Yeah. There's a whole community out there ready to offer support and understanding. And that sense of community can make a world of difference. Knowing that you're not alone and your experiences and challenges can be incredibly validating and empowering. So we've covered a lot of ground in this deep dive. We have. Exploring the nuances of low-risk interactions. Yeah. The importance of gradual progress the potential impact on various aspects of life, yeah, and the value of seeking support. It's been a really rich discussion. It has. And I think it highlights some incredibly valuable insights mm -hmm. for anyone who wants to better understand and support individuals with autism. I'm curious, what would you say is the most important takeaway for our listener? Ooh. What's the one thing you really want them to remember from this deep dive? You know, I think the most important takeaway is that even small, like low-risk interactions are incredibly valuable steps towards social comfort for individuals with autism. Yeah, I love that framing. Yeah. It's not about grand gestures or mm -hmm. forcing interactions, mm -hmm. but really recognizing the power of those like smaller moments. Exactly. Those moments are not insignificant. They're like building blocks. Yeah. For greater confidence, connection and overall well-being. Mm -hmm. It's about like celebrating those small steps, yeah. recognizing the power of gradual progress, and really empowering individuals with autism to connect with the world in ways that feel authentic and fulfilling to them. Yeah, that's such a powerful message. And it makes me think about how we can all apply this concept in our own lives. Yeah. Even if we don't personally know someone on the autism spectrum, yeah, we can still be mindful of these low risk interactions mm -hmm. and how they might benefit others. Absolutely. It's about fostering a more inclusive and understanding environment for everyone. I want to leave our listener with a little something to ponder. We've been talking about all these low risk interactions. So I want you to think about one activity that you personally enjoy mm -hmm. that fits this description. Ooh, I like where this is going. What brings you comfort and joy? Yeah. And how might that activity also be a way to connect with someone on the autism spectrum? It could be something you already do or something you'd be willing to try. That's a fantastic challenge. It encourages us to step outside of ourselves and think about how our own passions and interests could potentially bridge a connection with someone else. Maybe you love gardening and could invite someone to help you tend to your plants. Or perhaps you're a film buff and could start a movie club where everyone feels comfortable sharing their thoughts and opinions. The possibilities are endless. And it's a beautiful reminder that building connections is a two-way street. Oh. We all have something unique to offer. And by embracing neurodiversity and seeking common ground, we can create a more enriching and fulfilling world for everyone. Couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> so to our listener, we encourage you to take that challenge to heart. Reflect on your own experiences, explore the resources we've mentioned, and see if there's a way you can extend a hand of friendship and understanding to someone on the autism spectrum. You never know. You might just discover a new perspective, a new passion, or even a new connection that enriches your life in ways you never imagined. And that's a wrap on our deep dive into low-risk interactions and their impact on individuals with autism. Thank you for sharing this fascinating research with us and for joining us on this journey of discovery. It's been a pleasure diving deep with you. Until next time, keep exploring, keep connecting, and keep those brains buzzing.